Well, 10 games in and sitting in the European places, what a time to be an owl. Hello? Oh, hi, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, yeah, no, Pharaoh's still stalking, doesn't have any friends. Yeah, I mean, the boys are calling him Nigel now, so... That's alright, we'll sell him in January to West Brom or something for 15 million. Yeah, <laughs> there's always a sucker out there. A new contract for me! Oh, well, sir, thank you, that's, uh, that's greatly appreciated. Hey guys, I'm Aussie Villain and welcome to Season 4, Episode 3 here at Sheffield Wednesday as we try and lead the team to Champions League glory. And today it is a game versus bottom, a game versus top, West Brom and Manchester United. I'll let you guess which uh, team is which. Uh, so two big Premier League games, but before that we do have some news. And the big news is that we're going to be here for another four years, hopefully well, until we win the Champions League. But uh, we've got a contract for that long anyway, so that's good. Um, you can see it started about what's that, about a week ago in game, uh, and we go through to the end of the 2027 season, which is four years away. We've got a nice little bonus if we get to the Europa League, which hopefully we'll manage to do this year. Um, maybe even better, who knows? We'll have a look at how things are going in just a second. Uh, but yeah, so that's good. We are officially here for another four years, unless we go horribly wrong and get sacked, which hopefully isn't going to happen. Um, and one other piece of news to update you on. And that is that we have made a second signing. Now, this guy is... We obviously, remember, we had the 16-year-old uh, winger. We've got to wait a couple of years to get him in. Uh, but I'm looking forward to getting him into the club. But we've got somebody coming in January, and that is Oliver Brummer. Now, let's have a quick look at him here. We can see we're signing for $14.75 million. That was his release fee at Sion. He is potentially a very, very good striker. You can see, I mean, <laughs> finishing isn't his strongest point, which isn't ideal. But he's got good flair, good off-the-ball movement. He's relatively quick. He can dribble. Good free kick taker as well. I think he could be a good deep lying forward. Um, so, so maybe even an upgrade on Abel Ruiz on that front. Um, given that Abel Ruiz likes to play as an advanced forward, it might even work out uh, work out for the better. But the downside to him is that he, we we couldn't get him a work permit, um, which is obviously a problem. Now I've confirmed the transfer anyway because I do think that fourteen million or fifteen million for this guy is an absolute steal. My plan is that if we will have another go at it in January, if when he signs, because it will have been 120 days by then, I think, so we should be able to have another go. If it doesn't work, we'll look to send him out on loan somewhere in Europe to like a German league or a German team or a Spanish team, Italian team, one of the bigger leagues, and that should then qualify him for his work permit. I'm not an expert by any means, um, but it seems like if, if he's playing in one of those big European leagues, it, that in itself should be enough to just about get him across the line. He is an international as well. Um, so that's the plan. But hopefully come um, January when he signs, we'll be able to, to, to just get him a deal anyway. But let me know what you guys think. I think 14, 15 million for this guy is an absolute steal. I didn't want to risk somebody else coming in for him and triggering that release fee. So that is uh, that is done. Now, Four games to catch you up on since last episode. The well, first one was in the Premier League against Leicester City. Let's see how we did. We fell behind early. And we're 2-0 down at halftime. Before James Garner slipped in Castrati for a late consolation and his first goal for the club. So there we go. We were disappointing in this one. You can see from XG, we were we were second best. They came out in, the, in a weird formation. And I'll be honest, I didn't really know how to go up against it. And by the time we kind of figured out how to play against them, um, well, it was too late, wasn't it? So, yeah, I think in the end, well, Kostrati came on. So we, we were playing with wingers, and that seemed to work a little bit better. My thought at the time was just try and clog up midfield, make it difficult for them. Um, but that didn't work because we were two goals down inside 26 minutes. So... <laughs> yeah, disappointing that one. There's no way around that. Um, but, you know, we move on. We move on. It's a long season. Next up, it was Everton. Bazunu's error left us 1-0 down early on. We pulled level late on when the goalkeeper couldn't handle Edward's shot and Solanke tapped home before taking all three points in stoppage time when McCrory's defense splitting pass was finished by Solanke. So this was a really, really good win despite being below our best. You can see from XG, we were, we were dominant. Um, obviously, it was a shame to uh, to fall behind or to an error, but they, those things happen. Uh, we obviously got level on an error as well. Solanke off the bench, though, absolutely brilliant, as was McCrory. Um, yeah, really, really happy with that win from behind like that. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Next up, the final league game to catch you up on. It was a trip to Arsenal. We took a first half lead when Solanke crossed for Abel Ruiz at the near post. But Arsenal drew level in the second half after we failed to clear our lines. 
So a decent result this one. Um, you can see XG, I mean, the, their goal that they scored really does flatter them a little bit in that sense. They didn't really create too much outside of that. Uh, and it was so disappointing, wasn't it, the way that that goal, we just couldn't quite get it clear. But otherwise, we were okay. We played Gardner in the midfield role there. To be honest, I didn't see he was playing so poor till, um, well, I just didn't see till after that full time. We had Hannibal on the bench, and if I'd been paying attention like the manager should be, I probably would have taken made, made a change there. But um, yeah, I mean, to go away to Arsenal again, taking a point from that is is not bad, is it? We'll take that uh, any day of the week, I think. Next up, we were in EFL Cup action, the uh, Carabao Cup. It was, I think, a fourth round tie. They get into the quarterfinals anyway. We were hosting Bournemouth. They're in the championship. Let's see if we could get into the last eight. We went in front in the first half through a memorable first Wednesday goal for William McLaughlin. But Bournemouth pulled level before half time, but we won the penalty shootout. So that was a little bit too close for comfort. I do want to try and take the cup seriously this year, and I almost got my team selection wrong. Now, we didn't actually play like this. We actually had two up top, Naby and McLaughlin as the two, um, McQuaid dropping in, Deli Bashiru. As, and yeah, it wasn't actually that. It wasn't actually how we played. But anyway, um, it doesn't matter. We we got the job done in the end in penalties. You can see there, Glatzel missed for us, uh, but everybody else there, Mooney, Mendel, McQuaid, and uh, Deli Bashiru got uh, got their their penalties in, and uh, we got there in the end. So nicely done. We'll take it. We've got Tottenham in the next round. You can see down here in the quarterfinal. So we'll definitely be coming back for that one. Um, yeah, and that is well, it's exciting. We are well, we. I don't know if it's a two-legged semi-finals, but, you know, we're getting close to a first trip to Wembley. And we're looking okay. If we look at the league table, there we are up there in uh, seventh with 16 points, a positive goal difference. Uh, and, of course, games today against Manchester United, who are top and will do well to get anything out of them. And, of course, we begin with West Brom, who are not quite bottom, but very, very close to it. And hopefully we'll be able to get something from them as well. Let's have a look and see. Hopefully we'll get all three points from them, actually. This is what we're up against. We're expecting a 4-3-3 from them. And uh, we have a look at the team that we're sending out. It is Bazunu in goal. It's Taimon, it's Kamu, Arai, MB, and Martinez as the back four. Ghana, uh, Samare, and Hannibal as the midfield trio. It's uh, Edwards and Castrati out wide. Ruiz up top. A um, little bit of squad news. McCrory is suspended for this one. So that's why we don't see him uh, anchoring our midfield. And the other news, what was the other thing I saw? Oh, Ferro, he is still unhappy, and you can see his form is, I mean, he's, he's been playing in the reserves or on the 23s a bit, which is, explains his uh, recent form there, but six, uh, yeah, 6 yeah, 6.59 is average for the first team. Um, I think he might be uh, semi-permanently benched until he gets his act together. Barak Bashar is their manager. I recognize the name, but I don't I don't know anything about him, to be honest. Um, you can see their lineup there. There's a few decent players in there, it looks like, but... Um, You'd, you'd like to think, wouldn't you, that we'll be able to win this one and win this one well. Um, do we want to put on a worthy display? Just relax, I think, boys. Just go out there. Um, you know, it's West Brom. We should be able to beat them and continue what is shaping up to be a nice season going. All right, here we go at home to essentially bottom of the league. And, I mean, this is this is almost the next test for us now. Is, is I'm assuming they're going to come in and, well, just look to take a point from us. And although we are, of course, at the start of the year, favourites for relegation, of course, aren't we? Which is still annoying to me. Um, so it's whether we can break down these sorts of teams. We'll, you know, we'll determine how good our season is. But it's been a very promising start for us. Hannibal goes back there for Ghana. Nice ball through for Ruiz. Ruiz, that's a good run from Samari. Oh, what a start that is. 30-odd seconds into the game. And it's a wonderful team passing move. It's like watching Guardiola's Barcelona. It's brilliant, brilliant stuff from us. What a start to the game. And um, Samari's run, absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Look at look at it. There it is there. Abel Ruiz picked him out. First time finish. Goalkeeper's no chance. A third goal for Samare. He wasn't particularly brilliant last year, was he? But he's certainly looking the, piece, looking the business this season. We've got a set piece to defend here. Can we get that away, please? We cannot, but it's over the bar. And that's okay. Um, look at that up to fourth. We are Champions League. We are Champions League. Um, yeah, I mean, it is It is going It is going quite well. I'm excited to get that. You've got more defending to do here. Away, please, boys. And be at the near post. He finds Castrati. Now, he is rapid. Go on, Castrati. Go on, son. He's got Edwards with him. They're both as rapid as each other. Castrati. Oh, it's not the finish. 
just couldn't quite find it at the end there. You wonder if he almost needed to slow himself down and um, see if there was a pass on for Edwards or just maybe a little bit more composure. But anyway, we'll work on that in training. Come on, boys. Can we win this ball back, please? Hannibal. No, can't quite win it back for us. Um, I mean, we've we've done really well so far. We've only really seen them in uh, from set pieces have any uh, threat. But, of course, here it is here. Don't give away time on. I think he could have won that, mate, if I'm honest. Ball in. It's not the best. It's still there. It's blocked away. It's still with West Brom. Come on, boys. Oh, it's over the bar. Now, of course, we sold uh, Yenis Horn to them, didn't we? But I don't... Did I? Was he in their starting lineup? I wasn't paying attention. I uh, don't know why that hitting courage. Never hitting courage when you're winning. It never. It always gets that reaction. Uh, I can look here, can't I? No, he's not, not in the starting lineup for them. So that's 12 million well spent, West Brom. Let's see if we can demand a little bit more. A second goal before the break would be brilliant. Here we are, just before the half time. Can we go and win this back? Abel Ruiz, no, not quite. Somebody go to him. No, that's fine. All right. Samare, can he get a foot in? No, he's coming back. Oh, Hannibal. Here they come. Time on. Don't concede a goal here, boys. That's a wild shot. And, uh, well, is that going to be enough to get us into half time at 1 0? You look at the XG, and they've actually had the better of it, which is, I think, a little bit harsh on us, to be honest. But um, we got the early goal, and we didn't really do too much after that, did we? Do we say we're not happy with that? No gesture, we're not happy. We need to go and get that second goal. You get that feeling, don't you? Uh, that was midfield. We want to speak to the defense and to Mr. Ruiz up top. And... Um, yeah, I mean, the only player with above a seven is the man that got the goal. Even Abba Ruiz, who laid it on for him, has uh, dropped below. What do we want to say? Let's let's try a praise. Uh, no, I don't know what to say to them. What about a fire up? I haven't used that for a while. That didn't really work. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a slightly concerning, the, uh, the domination that they appear to be having over us here. Can we demand more again? Taimon is looking nervous. Do we want to change anything? He's not having the best game old time on. We have Mandel on the bench. Do we want to make that change? Maybe we do. Um, Hannibal's having... I'm really, really struggling to get anything out of our central midfielders. Um, I'm wondering if we want to try and block it up a little bit, actually. We have Bellic on the bench. He can come in and play in there. We just need him to sit in for us. Ghana can go as a deep-lying playmaker on support, and Samari can keep going box-to-box. Box. That's fine. Samari is also looking rather tired, um, but that just kind of is what it is. I wonder if we give them some praise. We've got more defending to do here. You just get the feeling that this game, after the first 30 seconds, has been drifting away from us, and I don't like where this is going. Bazonu is there. We probably shouldn't be attacking them. Um, I wonder if we should lower that tempo down as well. We'll just start and um, and do some closing down move, uh, motions. Can Castrati win that back for us, please? Go on, Liram. No, not quite. There's Mendel. Can he... St oh, you tell you what, you don't mind if they shoot from there, because if it goes in, at least your goalkeeper is going to feature on goal of the season. Um... We have not been great here. There is no, uh, there's no denying that. We'll probably go into tactics and do it. Um, but if we can, if we can just manage to see this out, then I'll be very, very happy indeed. Um, we probably want to go defensive now. We want to waste some time. Of course, the fear in doing this is always that they'll go and score, and then you'll have to just go and undo everything. Um, that's all fine. Let's get back out there and hopefully just close out a game of football. Well, we peaked after 30 seconds, but we got the job done. Three points in the bag. It was a nice goal. It was worthy of winning any game, but look at that XG. West Brom will consider themselves, and rightly so, a little bit hard done by there, I think. Um, that was a bit of a let-off, boys. So there we go. Into the Champions League places we go. And, well, this Manchester United game, is it a title six-pointer all of a sudden? I mean, it's not, but... <laughs> <laughs> you can't really struggle past West Brom and uh, say you're in a title race, I don't think. But there we go. We are fortunate to beat them, but the important thing, we did beat them. Guys, wait right there. We'll be back to go to Old Trafford next to see if we can take anything away from Manchester United. 
Okay, welcome back, welcome back. Now, if you had told me that we would be playing off against Manchester United with a chance of getting into the Champions League spots after 11 games, I wouldn't have believed you. But here we are. Manchester City managed to get past Aston Villa. Villa having a poor season, actually. Uh, so that our defeat to them isn't looking too good in uh, in hindsight. But anyway, uh, if we were to take anything from this game, we'd be back up into that top four, assuming Leicester don't take anything. But anyway, it's early days, but it's nice to be where we are in the league, isn't it? A quick look at what we're up against here. We're expecting a 4-2-3-1 formation from Manchester United and this is a team we're sending out now a few little minor injury concerns ahead of this one Ruiz has picked up a, uh, a tight calf I think it was so he's not really available um, and Dawson is similarly uh, out for a couple of days so we've got Gary Turpy moving into the bench uh, I love the moustache and the blonde hair that is quite the look for a 17 year old uh, and moving into the starting lineup we'll get to it in a second but it's uh, young McLaughlin uh, up top so Bazunu in goal, it's Carmo and Aribi as uh, R I and B even <laughs> as the defensive duo. Neko Williams comes in to play as the right wing back. Taimon as the left wing back. McCrory's back from suspension. He comes into defensive midfield. Samari Garner against his former club and Edwards as the midfield trio. Solanke and McLaughlin, as I said, goes up top. He got his first goal for us against Bournemouth in the cup. He's training like a house on fire. Uh, so we're going to give him a chance here and see how he goes. If it's not working out for him, um, then Ruiz, we could probably get a little bit of time out of him if needed. Okay, so we can see the lineups here. Milinkovic Savic, he's new, I think, for this season for them, isn't he? Um, anybody else? Pogba's on the bench. I mean, it must be nice, mustn't it? Uh, but uh, there we go. It's a very strong team, obviously, away from home. Um, just go out there, play a natural game. Um, we've got nothing to lose here to show the world what we're capable of. I think I do like that, actually. Can we pump our fists and say that? Yes, we can. Let's uh, point our finger and say we have faith in them. And, uh, well, see what we can do. All right, and here we go. I mean, obviously, we would take a point right now, wouldn't we? Leave Old Trafford with a point. We've left Manchester City with a point. We've left Arsenal with a point. Um, so you never know. But uh, these guys do seem to be the best team in the league. Oh, Ghana has been giving away possession a little bit too often for my liking this season. Taimon gets back brilliantly. Ball over the top looking for McLaughlin. Maybe we need a little bit more patience there. Edwards can't quite get the job done. And still, Manchester United come forward. Can Taimon get a block in here? He can't. Ball in front of goal. Oh, and we've got away with one there. Bruno Fernandes has missed, or oh, Fernandes has uh, has missed a sitter. That's Dutch, isn't it? Not uh, Portuguese. But anyway, I tried. Odegaard over a free kick. Bazunu is there, and it's gone in off his backside. Unbelievable. The Manchester City goalkeeper has conceded an own goal against Manchester United. Ah, oh, it's a frustrating one but it has, it's happened nonetheless. Let's encourage them. It's only one goal. You never know. Maybe there's a way back into this for us. Um, though the way that they uh, that they seem to have constant possession of the football would suggest otherwise. Ball in. Can we get that away? We can't. Um, yeah. I mean, they haven't had... Two men. I mean, they had that golden chance for Fernandez, didn't they? So I shouldn't uh, say it's not like they've had nothing. They could easily be 2-0 up. Solanke and Williams exchanging passes. Can we get down the wing there? We go inside. We're just not quite keeping possession the way I'd like. Edwards and Taimon exchange passes. There's a ball looking for Solanke. Solanke is uh, in the conversation for an England call-up. I don't think it happened. They did just uh, do some international call-ups, and I don't think he got a call-up, but he's been, in, been mentioned. Anyway, here we go with Edwards. Edwards, can he find a finish? No. It's still there for him, though, is it? No, and he's ended up just taking it out for a goal kick. But that was more like it, boys. We're still looking anxious and nervous. We've got work to do here defending a free. Can we mark Milinkovic Savage, please? Edge of the area for Greenwood. He always put it wide. We'll give them some more encouragement. And we've got another highlight for Manchester United. We're clinging on, aren't we? We've done well to get a block in there, but still they come away with it. And uh, Solanke a little bit lazy there. Oh, and that is a goal kick. Um, I'm wondering... I'm really torn as to whether we go and have a bit more of a go at them, sort of go and put a bit more pressure on them. Um, in terms of closing down, or if we're better off 
not protecting goal difference and admitting defeat, but I'm wondering maybe a high line isn't the way to go. Oh, what an annoying time to concede right on the stroke of half time. Um, I'm wondering if that's not the way to go. Let's try raising the tempo. Maybe shorten the passes. Uh, we can't complain. We've been we've been very much second best in the game. There was only that one chance for Edwards, really. Um. Yeah, could Bazuna have done a little bit better there, perhaps? McLaughlin up top is not having a great game. Now, what we don't want to do is, come on, concede another one now in first half stoppage time. Williams gets it clear for Solanke. Can we get them on the break? Solanke, he's got three in front of him. McLaughlin is with him. He's got Nico Williams on the outside. Solanke keeps going. He's into the penalty area. Solanke has it going. Someone's in front of goal. We can't miss. And it's James Garner against his former team. And in first half stoppage time, out of nowhere, we've got ourselves back into this game. It's 2-1 now. And only a second goal for... And Solanke did brilliant, didn't he? There was absolutely nothing on. He's got a decent shot away at the end of it. And look at Garner. He couldn't miss. He couldn't miss. I mean, he could have, but he didn't miss. That's the important thing. And, uh, well, there we go. We're going to go into the break. Just the goal down, despite very much being second best. But XG suggests maybe not as second best as uh, as we maybe thought. Um, you've been unlucky so far. We're looking very, very nervous and anxious. So maybe we say we're pleased. Yeah, just try and get them back on side. Um, let's say we have faith in you. And let's let's give it a little bit of time at the start of the second half here and see how this develops. I mean, we've given them a goal. We've got a, another free kick here to defend. Bazunu. Oh. I mean, there's not much you can do about that, is there? I mean, don't give away the foul in the first place. But that looked... That's one of those, isn't it? Hold your hands up and say, you bastard. Uh, all right, so McLaughlin's not working out up front. It was a bit of a risk to play, to be honest, but with Abel Ruiz's injury, I thought it might be a risk worth taking. Um, actually, cancel that. You know what I'm wondering is, um, I wonder if we go to wingers, because this just isn't quite working, is it? It usually works a lot better than that. Uh, what this will allow us to do is, uh, yeah, make a sub. Anyway, all right, I'll edit this out. We'll come back. Okay, so we've made two subs. We've taken McCrory off. We've taken basically both the bookings off the field. McCrory, who wasn't playing well anyway, and McLaughlin. Garner drops back in, and uh, Oliver comes up to play as the advanced playmaker. Castrati comes on to play inverted winger on the left. Edwards will continue on the right. Selenki will go up top. We're going to attack them um, and see if we can get ourselves back into this game. I don't think we've, oh, we've got another free kick now. Odegaard can just go away, can't he? You shouldn't be able to be that good. Um, let's, well, we'll wait and see what happens with this highlight first. Can we get to that? Castrati knocks it down to Oliver. Crossfield pass. Nice one for Edwards. Maybe we should have been playing this way all along. Edwards, can he get across here? He's got Castrati at the back post. He's got Solenki as well. Edwards has done brilliantly again. It's fallen for Williams. Williams, I'm not quite sure what that was, mate. Cross it. Pass it. Don't just do one, something in between the two of them. They're on the break. And... We've got players back. Can we stop the ball coming across? We can't. And Odegaard, honestly, can go to hell. Is that his hat trick? He has been brilliant. We'll berate them. And it all comes back, doesn't it, to Neko Williams at the other end. Make a decisive decision. Cross it or pass it. Don't pass it to a Manchester United player. Actually, it won't be a hat trick because the first one was an own goal, wasn't it? Um... Now, of course, there is a risk here now that we just go and get completely... What's happened there? Oh, we're not. We seem to get absolutely pumped every time we play Manchester United, don't we? They are just a bit of a class above, to be honest, right now. Um, we're not playing well. We've given away a penalty as well. Can Bazunu do something? It's Odegaard for the hat trick. 
And to be honest, I think he deserves that. He has absolutely run the show out there today. 5-1, um, though. That seems harsh. I obviously got my halftime team talk wrong. It's 2-1 at the halftime, and 20 minutes later, we're 5-1 down. We come straight back. You might argue making this change in formation was a mistake. But with Ruiz injured, this seemed the obvious kind of thing to do. I de there's no real point in... Um... Oh, I thought we were going to get done. That would have been way too easy. I didn't really see a point in um, in bringing him on, to be honest. Here we go with Edwards. No, he shot his high, wide and handsome. Do we have a right back on the bench? I'm getting annoyed with Neko Williams. We do. Let's bring Martinez on for him. Even though B is playing a 6.2 back there. Williams is far from being our worst defender. Oh, for... This is um, this is getting to the point where we just want it to end, isn't it? Clearly what I said at half time was wrong. We've come out this second half and they have absolutely ripped us to shreds. Uh, let's tell them to focus. I don't even know what else to say to them. Um, that deep line isn't working. We've got another... I mean, this is getting into the ranges of uh, record defeat, isn't it? Castrati and Edwards. Now, they are both rapid. Can we see something from them here? Castrati gets on the outside. Can he find the finish? No, he cannot. We will get a corner. And with 10 minutes to play, maybe this is the beginning of the great comeback. 7-6. We'll beat him in a tie break. Heather to wait. Can Edwards... Run, Edwards. Go on, mate. You can get there. Oh, he's done brilliantly. Well done. I didn't actually expect him to do that. Let's encourage them again. It's one of these games where, according to XG, the score is very harsh on us. But, um, yeah, that second half got out of control, didn't it? That's so disappointing. It's actually quite infuriating. Like, underdog's best effort. Guys, yeah, that was absolutely horrible. Um, far from pleased. So hopefully we've just seen the low point of the season. Youthful Sheffield Wednesday come unstuck. Uh, pleasure to tell you what, Solskjaer. I'll punch you in the face if you say that again. Um, that's that's piss-taking, isn't it, from Ollie there? And I'm not, not happy with that. And I'll be having a go at him in the press afterwards. Um, yeah, that is uh, obviously, hopefully, the low point. Yeah. Goal difference has been destroyed. Ultimately, it is just one game. It's not the end of the world. But it certainly feels a little bit like that right now, doesn't it? Very, very disappointed with that. But anyway, that'll do it for today, though, guys. If you have enjoyed the first half of that episode, make sure you hit thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. And, um, yeah, I mean, you look at that. We scraped past the bottom team at home and got smashed away. That is, um, yeah, not the, not the form of a team looking to get into Europe, is it? But anyway, we'll be back next time. I think what we'll do is that is Leeds... Tottenham too far away. Now, that's that's not too bad, is it? So we'll do that. We'll come back for Leeds and Tottenham in the league. A chance to get uh, into the semi-finals of, uh, of the EFL Cup. That's uh, getting towards a European spot, of course. Um, and then, obviously, Leeds. Bit of a Yorkshire derby as well. That could be a good one. And, uh, well, hopefully we'll win a few games between now and then. Thank you.